Jimmy, are you in there? Push, push, push. Jimmy, what's going on in there? You can do it. Push, push. Okay, Jimmy, I'll come back later. Hey, everybody. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Yes. Welcome yeah. back to the Page Search Podcast. My name is Jason Rothman. As always, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how is it going today? We're about to do a QA. and a Yeah. Um, it's, it's a great day for a QA. and a Boy, I think we should answer. I think we should just say that at the top of every show. It's a great day for Q&A. Um, and uh, happy to be here. Um, we have some, we have some from, I always say it, but it's true. Our very smart listeners have some very intelligent questions and we're going to try our best to answer those. This is the only place you guys can get this. It's a very unique place to go. Paid search podcast Q and a, you want to send your very intelligent question to us, paidsearchpodcast.com. Click on the contact us form and send it on. Now we have a bunch of questions and Jason's an extremely busy guy. I barely get him in here every day. And I would spend four hours answering everything, but we can't do it. So keep sending them in. We will get to your question. Uh, and we, th- we thank you for sending all of those. Jason, before we start, you have a special announcement. Well, I want to thank Kyle Solarud and his podcast, Google Ad Strategy with Kyle Solarud for sponsoring today's episode. We are trying so hard to get these podcasts out to you we do two episodes a week now but there is still a ton of weekly time for google ads advertisers and professionals to want to be listening to a podcast and we have another podcast to recommend google ad strategy with kyle solarud one thing kyle did with this podcast when he started is he started answering the most common questions with google ads so if you go back Look at the first few episodes. You'll basically be getting a free intro to Google Ads course with his first 30 episodes. And then more recently, Kyle's been interviewing other Google Ads experts and covering specific topics like Google Ads for e-commerce, Google Ads for dentists, Google Ads for other types of local businesses. Wherever you're at with Google Ads, whether you're a beginner, an expert, an advertiser, or professional, we think you'll get a lot out of Kyle's show. Search for Google Ad Strategy with Kyle Solarud on your podcast player. You can also go to googleadstrategy.com. We'll have a link to Kyle's podcast website in the description. And Kyle's got a ton of episodes out there. Uh, Some recent episodes, when should I start using uh, smart shopping campaigns? What's the best targeting to layer on for displaying YouTube ads? Google Ads for chiropractors, a very topical topic here for a lot of our listeners, Chris, what are some ways PPC agencies can charge clients? So Kyle does a great podcast. It's focused on Google ads. It's called Google ad strategy with Kyle Solarud, friend of the show, go to Google ad, Google ad strategy.com and subscribe to Google ad strategy with Kyle Solarud today. So Chris, I want to thank Kyle for sponsoring today's episode, Kyle Solarud, and we will have a link in the show notes to his podcast. So with that said, are you ready to become the maestro, become the maestro, become the teacher and teach these listeners about Google ads, Chris? Yes. Um, Everyone put your listening ears on um, and hands in the cookie jar. As my uh, seven-year-old says, that's that Jason, that's, that's where they fold their legs up and put their hands in their lap. It keeps them from wiggling and moving. So it's, it's a learning position. It's, it's a listening and learning position. So here we go. We got, uh, we're going across the world to Athens, Greece to hear from George. Greetings, beloved duo from Greece. You are not only international, you are intercontinental. The billions of Greeks, PP, PPC managers salute you. Thank you very much for educating us every week and making us better PPC managers. Here we go. 
he butters us up and then he has a question. I have a question that really bugs and uh, honestly have nowhere to ask it but here. I want to become one of the best PPC managers, but although I know how to run and optimize campaigns, I'm currently lacking the upper level thinking that mm. scale and true performance requires. Um, in my performance, uh, it, or, so he says, uh, in my book performance, it is all, in my book, Performance is only qualified leads and traffic. Where should I look for the true light? Boy, that's, that's some deep thinking from Greece. Jason, you got something for him? Yeah, it sounds like a very humble question where he knows he's on the right track with Google Ads, uh, but he wants to get, it sounds like, to that upper level thinking. I've I think I've talked about this yeah. sometimes, Chris, where there's we're managing Google Ads accounts day to day and – we're in there so often that there's just, and this has been talked about with other industries and other skill sets. There's like different pathways in the brain that get built up that you can't just read an article um, and have these pathways. And part of it, I think, is like, if I get hit with a situation in Google Ads, it's not just knowing like the definition of a keyword versus search term, which you so elegantly took up seven and a half percent of last week's episode explaining to our expert <laughs> listeners. I appreciated that. But Chris, um, it, it's not just knowing the definitions and stuff like that. It's like knowing all your options, knowing what's going to happen if you do those options, knowing what you're going to have to think about if you do those options, knowing how to set things up, knowing how to move, maneuver in the count quickly. All that stuff, it just, it kind of happens when you get experience. So the question is, how do you do that? I think you have to do a lot of, I think you just have to, so a couple things, Chris, I want to recommend a book, Advanced Google AdWords by Brad Geddes. We both read it. I think we both still reference that book um, yeah. month to month. It's just a great book. And if you're going to have one book, that's a book we recommend. And then you want to be reading all the Google Ads support documents and stay up to date with that. Look at the Google Ads blog and- Whoa. Yeah, that's, uh, that's where I've learned a ton about Google Ads is through those support documents, the support articles. And then I would say it's not, it's not like a fun answer, Chris, but other than getting experience, doing whatever you have to do to get it, th that experience, get those clients, whether it means charge less, work for friends. I even think people should be investing in their own campaigns if they're really trying to learn the platform for whatever they do, a blog, whatever kind of website they have, just spend a hundred dollars a month and, and kind of learn a lot. But, but other than getting experience, is there anything you can say? Like, I don't think there's a shortcut. I, so George, my, my thought is this, and this, I mean, I, he, he said something very specific. He said, I want, he knows how to run and optimize campaigns, but he's list, he's missing the upper level thinking. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you that what really brought it in for me was um, when I started working for a bunch of clients and, you know, I needed to present material to them. I needed to be able to present information to them in a logical way. I needed to simplify it so that they can very easily understand what's happening. Sure. And, George, if you want to take your knowledge to the next level, essentially, I don't know if you work for clients or you have, you know, something like that, or, or if you're in-house or it's, it sounds like he calls himself a PPC manager. So I assume he has multiple accounts he's working with, um, if not in-house. So what you want to do is go out there and talk to your clients and task yourself with explaining in two minutes complex things you know uh, yeah. task yourself with explaining you know uh why uh it's important that uh, the click-through rate goes down because it has to do with how much cost is uh is, is attributed per click and that you can get more volume without spending more per click these complex connections and bringing each of the data points in and and turning that into a simple idea can only come, and I think you said it best, the synapses in your brain yeah. you need to be able to connect and fire on that. And it's going to happen when you communicate it out loud. If you don't have anyone to talk to, write it out, record yourself, start a YouTube channel, you know, just something where you can 
you, you, where you can audibly explain it because I've been doing training for years. I've been doing it in person. I do a whole lot online now. And that has literally helped me communicate and understand Google ads be, uh, better because I'm forced to explain it to people who have no idea what I'm talking about. So yeah. that's my advice. You know, say it. Yeah, Sorry. Chris, experience, you got to have the experience, but I think you make a great point when it talks about the true light, the higher level, the upper level thinking. I think the best way to go about that is like you're saying, take the AdWords concepts, take the Google Ads strategy concepts, the actual technical stuff, but have the end business goal in mind. Why are you adding a phrase match negative and not a broad match negative in a certain case? Why are you increasing a bid 20% on a keyword? Um, to me, that's the upper level thinking. That's the true light where you know all the stuff in Google Ads, the, the, the strategy, the technical stuff, all your options. Anybody can learn that. But, but actually tying that stuff to actual business goals and business results and being able to communicate that line of thinking very clearly, to me, that's the upper level and that's the true light. And it doesn't have to be super complex. The true light is simple. It's just, what are we doing in the Google ads account to make the client more money in their bank account and just tying in Google ad strategy to business results. And that's to me, that's as upper level as you got to get. That's the true light. Yeah. Okay. Hope that's helpful, George. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the question. Let's move on to Sam from Pittsburgh and Sam has a question, um, and I'll, I'll read it here. Uh, if you're not seen, So you're going to read every immediate... question. Sorry, I know. I, I feel like you're better prepared. I, it's been a bit of a het hectic day for me, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to throw them up. I'm going to pitch them up. You're going to... Did I, did I hear that? Then... Did I hear that word? Did I hear the S word? Yes. You want to say that again? Pit, pitch them up. Sorry. Stressed. So, Sorry. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Can I Sorry. hear it without a question mark at the end? <laughs> no. All right. Sam from <laughs> Pittsburgh, PA. If you're not seeing, uh, Sam's got a tough question, Chris, just FYI. This is this, this why I wanted to hand it off to you. You want to let me? <laughs> <laughs> this one's tough. I see why you wanted to read it now. Okay. I got you. <laughs> All right, Sam, Sam from Pittsburgh. Hey, that's why we're here. Sam from Pittsburgh. If you're not seeing immediate results, what's a good time frame to wait before you implement some changes? I have a manual search campaign set up, and I'm in the B2B space where no one is necessarily directly searching for the product I promote. That's an issue. My time on page is not good. Average of five seconds bounce rate is around 85%. I have listened to a bunch of your podcasts and they are seriously great. Any advice is appreciated. Sam, thanks for writing in. He said any advice. So sometimes I get that shady yeah. agency going with me, Chris. And they're like, I need <laughs> to advice. be a consultant for shady agencies. I need to be like, hey, yeah. if you're a horrible person, call me up and I'll show you how to scam people. Because <laughs> if your bounce rate is 85%, you know what you can do? You can throw on multiple Google Analytics tags. That probably puts a bounce rate at 0%. <laughs> And then you can tell the <laughs> clients you can have zero percent bounce rate. Like, oh like man, like that's some upper level thinking, Chris. Like, I know all angles of this game, and don't try to yeah. put anything in front of me and get anything by me. Because if I see someone doing that to me, if someone tries to pull that on me, I'll slap them you in the it. street, Chris. Because I know about all the angles. So, assuming you don't want to do a horrible thing and put uh, multiple analytics tags. He's got two questions here, Chris. Number one, how long do you wait to implement changes when you're not seeing activity? Number two, we'll talk about separately, what do you do when people aren't necessarily searching directly for your product or service? So let's start with the first one. How much time do you give it before you start making a bunch of changes when you're not seeing the activity level you want to see? Okay. Um, this, this is really hard. I, I don't really have an answer. It is hard, isn't one it? About, about how long to wait because in reality, the, my, my answer kind of negates that, um, that question because what my real answer is, um, if you're sitting around and in a week, especially if in two weeks, you see so little data that you see like one click a day, maybe two clicks a day. If that's the kind of level we're talking about, 
I would say like you, you're going to have to take things a different direction. You're going to need to expand your targeting on this. You're going to have to start going after higher, uh, higher funnel stuff. You're going to have to start using uh, tactics that we've discussed many times on the podcast. Uh, you know, going after broader keywords, high, higher funnel ideas, you know, if they're not looking for your keywords specifically, they don't know about your service. They don't know about your product, but they certainly have issues that you can solve. So you go after issue searches, you go after problem searches, you know, not necessarily solution searches. So if, you know, if you're selling, um, if, so if you're selling something to the, to the effect of, uh, um, I, I, I'm thinking of one client I had years ago, they were doctors that wanted to sell, second opinion spine examinations that's okay. a low volume search niche yeah. right there <laughs> yeah so they, they it was people that basically had already <laughs> and had, we only want to do it in our little city of uh, 100,000 people 4 miles yeah we yep. do a 4 mile radius <laughs> so it's like you know it's like wha- I mean, that's really people don't search second opinion spine doctor you know i mean like that's not it that people don't search it so what i had to do is i have to go after symptoms after things that were more um prevalent in the way that people search so what they might search for was things about uh you know uh cheaper uh you know affordable back pain solutions or you know things that were um a little more prevalent in the way that people uh would search higher it didn't in the funnel. had to do with yeah yeah, much, much higher in, in the funnel. So that's what I would suggest doing. Don't sit around and let, let the system grind to a halt as you optimize a campaign that's getting four clicks a week. Right. Go, go explore. But bid cheap. Make it worth it. Don't bid $6 on crap. Bid 50 cents, bid a dollar, whatever you can get away with. But, you know, you, you've got to test or you'll grind to a halt. Yeah, Chris. It, of course, the first question on when do you make when do you start making a lot of changes when you're not seeing the activity level? Well, that's that's just going to depend on the niche because, like you were saying, two clicks. But of course, what if you have very expensive clicks? Um, it just depends. I would say this in terms of activity: don't make any rash decisions in the first week because there really is something to the Google Ads ramp up, I think, where you don't have quality score when you're starting out, and other people do, and then as they see you start to get some clicks. They give you more quality score. Um, my first move usually is to jack the bids up, Chris. There's like home foundation services where they use jackhammers or whatever and jack that foundation up to a level. That's what I do with bids. I got an email from a new client this week. He was like, uh, our budget's $50 a day. Um, we're a mover. We could be getting clicks for $10 in this smaller area. Why are our bids $30? And I'm like, I understand the concern, but what we do is we just jack them up to be as aggressive as possible early on. Make sure it's not a bidding issue. Once we start spending the full daily budget, as soon as that happens, we change on a dime and we start lowering our bids and see how low we can go. That's just the way I like to do it instead of just waiting, waiting, waiting and not knowing if it's a low bid issue. Um, And then you got to pay attention to your search impression metrics. Now that gets into if your high search impression share um, and it's a low volume niche. What do you do, Chris? I think you make a great point. F- get higher in the funnel, get creative, try broad keywords, see what people are searching for out there, get to the p- problems people have with that topic and show them that you have a s- solution for that. Now, will I tell you that's going to work? I can't claim that. I know that if you, someone's searching for a mover in Tampa and we have a keyword movers in Tampa, well, we're going to get clients because they're searching for exactly what we offer and we're super deep in the funnel. We're as deep as you can go. Does higher funnel stuff work on search at the level people want? Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's all about trying stuff out. But like you said, lower bids, protect yourself, protect your budget. The only thing I can add on top of that, Chris, is when you're targeting something that people aren't necessarily searching directly for, however you're getting traffic from other methods, you can retarget that traffic through the Google ads account. And that can be a really, really effective strategy um, to get relevant traffic from your Google ads account when people aren't necessarily searching for your exact service or product. Really, really 
uh, focus on remarketing. That'd be kind of my biggest piece of advice. Yeah. All right, Jason. Um, so am I, am I clear to read the next question? We're good to go. Ha ha, Chris. That's, that's a, such a funny statement. I see what you're trying to do there. Go ahead. Am I a bad actor? Am I bad at yeah, doing my lines? You're, you're a bad actor. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So we have a question from YouTube, the country of YouTube, way across the pond. Um, I can legitimately so, finally say billions of people in this city of YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Beautiful place. Actually, it's pretty trashy. <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty it's, horrible. <laughs> it's, it's pretty trashy. <laughs> it's really it has its really seedy areas you know it's kind of really there scenic there's a lot of things to look at but just don't talk to yeah. the locals like don't yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're freaking crazy yeah it's the country of youtube yeah it's freaking crazy so uh dragos from the country of youtube uh it says hi guys on pure broad match keywords are you using negative keywords to not have the interference with the other keywords. What type of bidding are you using for the pure broad match keywords? Do you create different campaigns? Very direct question. Yeah, good questions. So we did an episode, if you Google or on YouTube, you search broad match keywords like a pro uh, paid search podcast, you'll find it. And it's out there. And so we have a lot of thoughts in there, but just Chris, to give people kind of a recap of um, pure broad keywords. I'm actually running some massive pure broad keywords um, activity right now that the way I'm happening to do it right now, I'm putting them in existing ad groups or yeah, I'm put, I'm, I am, uh, I'm doing that. Yeah. I'm putting them in, in existing ad groups with other match types that are running. Really? Yes, oh. really. Yes, really. Because the, the account I'm doing it in is a very complicated account. It's not so easy to go, oh, I'm going to create um, a broad match keyword campaign. I'm going to create a broad match keyword ad group and apply it to X number of campaigns. For whatever reason, the way this thing has been set up with the cl what the client wants, it's difficult to do that. So I had to adjust. And so I'm running pure broad match keywords in existing ad groups. The way I am controlling the situation is I am doing manual keyword bids at the keyword level. I have my ad group theme bids for those topics, and I just manage my bids that way for exact for age and broad, and broad match modified at the ad group level like normal. But I have a filter set up, include keywords that are the match type broad and keywords that don't have a plus sign in them. That filters for pure broad keywords. And so anytime I want, I can pull up, pull up my pure broad filter and I only see my broad pure broad match keywords and then I can manage their bids manually um, separately from the ad group bids. So that's the way I'm protecting myself with the bid, doing manual bids. Now things come up, like I recently put a bid adjustment on the campaign for a device and it was an aggressive bid adjustment and I knew I didn't want to get that aggressive with my pure broad keyword. So I had to lower them before I did that. So there's a lot to keep track of. That's the way I'm doing it right now. Um, in terms of, do I recommend that? Chris, I think having them in their own ad group is a good thing. Um, generally, I, if I could go back and do it, I would do it that way. Now, what do you think about having them in their own ad group versus their own campaign? To me, um, that makes it too complicated yeah, in terms of just trying it out. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any value. I, I, I've said this over and over again. I don't think there's any value in having things in their own campaign simply for the reason of breaking it out. Um, the only thing that I typically put in separate campaigns is if I want to put brand in its own campaign, I'll do that because I want to monitor that separately. It'll have a different, might have a bit different bidding strategy, different budget, things like that. Or I might put things in a separate campaign because geographically I need to target it different. Based on the settings. Yeah. Um, based on the settings, things like that. So no, I definitely wouldn't put it in a separate campaign. Okay. So if, if all you're going to change on pure broad keywords are the bids, then it is very, to me, very okay to put yeah. them in either their own ad group or ad groups in the existing campaign or mm -hmm. what I'm doing right now, put them in existing ad groups with other match types.
but the key is you control their bids. If they're in their own yeah. ad groups, you can control their bids at the ad group level for the, the ad group you put a little name on there that says like pure broad and then the topic. And then if you're advertising with them in the, as keywords in the same ad groups as other match types, then I would recommend a filter to show you only broad match keywords. Again, match type broad and the keyword text does not include a plus sign. Save that filter. That'll show you per pure broad keywords. You can manage their bids at the individual keyword level. So you got to protect yourself with the bids. That's, that's the biggest thing to me. Now, Chris, let's talk negative keywords. I've got, yeah. a, I've got an interesting thing I'm doing. What do, you, what do you do? How do you monitor for that? So this is not something I do. I do not use negative keywords at, uh, you know, in order to keep overlap from happening with my broad keywords. It, it just, point, it, yeah. it's not a problem. Um, and the reason is because of what Jason talked about. The reason is, because there is a, a giant cavern or crevasse or, you know, just it's impassable area between the broad keywords and the, and the targeted low funnel, high quality keywords. And that giant area that, that's impassable is made up by the bids. Great the, point. The, the, bit, the, the searches cannot make the jump um, from you know, my broad keywords to the exact keywords um, or, or vice versa because the bids are so different. My, my exact keywords are going, my, my, I should say targeted keywords, my modified broads, my, my long tail phrase match, my exact match, they might have a bid of $6. Mm -hmm. And um, if there's a search that matches one of those, it's going to hit on those. It's going to go to those. It would not go to the broad keywords because the broad keywords are bid at one dollar, a dollar fifty. It's just th the quality score is not high enough. The ad rank is not high enough. It's not going to make that jump. So in the end, if you're using bids appropriately, you should not have this problem. You should not have those searches jumping from your targeted mm. over to your broad. It shouldn't be a problem. So when you, when you have two keywords in a in a campaign, like the word divorce, divorce lawyer, pure broad, and then the word divorce lawyer phrase. As I understand it, Google Ads is going to go, okay, your Google Ads is a campaign or account. I've got to, well, I don't want to say, you know, just to say the wrong thing. Yeah. But I know that if they're in the same campaign, Google Ads is, which is what we're talking about here, Google Ads is going to go, okay, your campaign is going to bring one keyword for the divorce lawyer search to auction to compete against other yep. Google Ads accounts. It's going to bring one. So internally, looking at your keywords bid times quality score a little bit of ad extensions but we're going to get your ad rank for each of those two keywords and we're going to take your higher ad rank to auction and we're not going to punish you because you have two different ad ranks that we have to select from that's the way i understand it chris is in affirmation there and that's the way it worked yeah. so if i just to, i'm thinking of what i'm doing with my bids right now chris my bids on non pure broad for a topic I'm doing this on are at this level, my bids for pure broad are at this level and the multiple difference that it ranges ranges from like a five X to a nine X right now. That's yeah. what I'm doing. Sure. So yeah. I've got phrase exact broad match modified bids and I'm bidding from a range of five to nine times stronger on those than my pure broad keywords. They're, they're like, they're a fraction of it because, because of the quality, I've got to protect myself with those lower bids. And so because of that, if I have them both in an ad group, it's okay because if anybody does a search divorce lawyer, that phrase match version of it that I'm bidding five to nine times stronger, their quality scores are probably going to be about the same. So that means the ad rank from that keyword, the phrase match is going to be five to nine times stronger. And it's going to select that one for the good searches, just like normal. But the pure broad one there will be there to show up on other searches that the phrase match won't pick up. So every now and then I see like a really high quality choice search term come in from a pure broad, even when I'm bidding lower, but generally it's not a problem. And Chris, just something interesting I'm doing recently um, in terms of looking at the exact search terms that come in from pure broad and trying to decide whether it's worth it or trying to find the right negatives to add based on the data I'm getting. I'm highlighting my pure broad keywords 
um, I'm going in chunks of about 20, like I'm checking off mm. 20 of them. And once they're highlighted, I do the little search terms option to only show me the hot search terms for the highlighted keywords yeah. for a certain date range I want. I download those search terms into a sheet. Then I look for, if there's more than 20, I go back and I highlight the next set of 20, get the search terms for those ones, pure broad, put them in the sheet. And then I get my sheet and I go, these are my search terms. This is my conversion data. And I just go down the list. I'm like, okay, is that a good, is that a good search term? Do I want to be targeting that? And then I make a list of new keywords that I add in there based on those search terms. And I make a list of negatives that I add in there. But actually like exporting that search term data that comes only from the broad match, pure mm -hmm. broad match keywords, I have mm -hmm. found it, yeah. especially when they're in the same ad group as other keywords, when they're in, when they're in their own ad group, it's easy because you just leave the search terms for that ad group. But when they're in the same ad group as other match types, which is okay because you control the bids manually at the keyword level, but in terms of getting the search terms data, I have found it to be really helpful to export those search terms and look at only the pure broad search terms and make negative and new keyword decisions that way. So that's that's kind of a tactic okay. I've been using recently that we didn't discuss in that, uh, yeah, uh, like a pro I, episode. I, I mean, just, just personally, I prefer different ad groups, but... Um, Chris, I wouldn't say that there if, is if, a if you would way. take that earwax out of both your ears, you would have heard me say, I would prefer it myself as well. But if you had to deal with the people I deal with, again, I've oh, had guns pointed at me for my Google ads guns. management. They said, I tried to leave. Yeah. I tried to leave. And they pointed a gun at me <laughs> and they said, you're not leaving. And I said, well, you know what I said, Chris? I said, okay. So I haven't okay. left. And the way this particular account I'm thinking of is set up, it's just not possible to do a bunch of a bunch of ad groups at, at scale. Okay. So I, I threw them in okay. existing ad groups just to try. But you know what? Now that I'm talking to the great Chris Schaefer, I'm telling myself, you know what? It's been four weeks. No excuses. It's time to prune them out of the existing ad groups and, and put them in new ad groups. Because this Chris... I was, I was just testing them out. I wanted to see how they work. I, and I didn't have confidence, Chris. I thought, you know what? They're probably not going to work. I'm just appeasing a client's wish here for, for like more volume. Let's just try it, get it out of the way. It's not going to work. But you know what, Chris? It worked. And now that it worked, I've got to go back in there. And I've got to put those pure broad match keywords from the, the existing ad groups into their own ad groups because it's going to be a long-term strategy. So I got to go do that right now. Yeah, it's got to go. Yeah, so, that's right. Um, Let me wrap up the this show, is a, Chris. This has been a Jason Rothman uh, 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 therapy session. That's what we call this. So hit it, Jason. Let's go. I like to hit you. So I want to thank <laughs> Kyle Solarud for sponsoring today's episode, Google Ad Strategy with Kyle Solarud. Go there right now. Go to googleadstrategy.com. You can ask Kyle a question. You can see how you can listen to the show. It's on all the areas where you listen to podcasts. Search in your podcast player. Google ad strategy with Kyle Solarud. What are some ways PPC agencies can charge for their clients? How to hide products from Google shopping ads? Are you using audience targeting in your Google search campaigns? Google ads for e-commerce. Tons of great episodes. It's a podcast about Google ads, just like ours. If you love this show, you'll love that show. Googleadstrategy.com will have a link to it. And in your podcast player, search Google ad strategy with Kyle Solarud. Go subscribe today. So, Chris, that's it for us. If you have a question for our show, paidsearchpodcast.com, the contact page, we will be back on Monday. And Monday's episode will be continuing our perfect Google Ads campaign account checklist. Mm. And this thing yeah. is turning into a gem, Chris. It's turning into a gem. And I'm Beautiful. excited to uh, get back there on Monday and talk to you. You are such a great guy. I'm so fortunate to be doing a podcast with you. You're giving me the thumbs up sign. You're giving me the wave. But you know what, Chris? I just, sometimes I, I don't verbalize it enough. Like, I'm so glad we met. <laughs> We'd have such a good time doing this, and it's turned into such a fruitful friendship and business partnership, and it's so great. And you're just a great guy, and you do CrossFit. You stay in shape. and Oh, my God. You watch it. You watch it. Sometimes you That's it. All right. Thanks, guys, for listening. We'll be back next week. All right. All right, all right.